Welcome. My name is Tracy Lawrence and I'm the founder of Grand Family Planning and I'm very excited today to be talking to Anne-Marie Olson, Dr. Anne-Marie Olson of Sophisticated Hearing and today we're going to talk about topics that concern families who uh, have family members who may have hearing issues. Correct. Um, Anne-Marie, why don't you talk a little bit about um, your practice and what, what you do for folks. Okay. Uh, as Tracy said, my name is Dr. Anne-Marie Olson. I'm an audiologist. I have a Doctor of Science degree in audiology and my practice is Sophisticated Hearing, which is located in Hohokus, New Jersey. I'm licensed by the state of New Jersey as both an audiologist and a hearing aid specialist and I'm nationally board certified in hearing instrument sciences. Wonderful. Dr. Olson and I have been talking about how hearing loss is a major public concern. Mm -hmm. Just as, as some background, hearing loss is something that didn't particularly affect my family except when my dad got older. Mm -hmm. And um, when my dad lived with us, boy, that TV got loud. Right. <laughs> and that's often a first sign that someone's having difficulty hearing is that the TV is louder. They might be asking people to repeat themselves or constantly saying what, or of course misunderstanding what's been said. All right. um, but to answer your question about some statistics, hearing loss is a major public health issue in this country and it's the third most common uh, physical condition behind uh, heart disease as well as arthritis. arthritis. Wow. Hearing loss is an, an invisible condition and it's typically not painful and it can happen gradually over the course of many years. So many people may have an undiagnosed hearing loss or mild hearing loss and not realize that they're not hearing as well as they could. They say the statistics are about 20% of uh, Americans have some form of hearing loss and once a person reaches 65, there's a 33, well I should say one out of uh, three people over the age of 65 are likely to have some form of hearing loss. Um, because it's a hidden condition and it occurs gradually, it often goes unnoticed and and an untreated hearing loss can um, definitely affect someone's quality of life. They are less likely to engage in social activities, group situations, meeting family or friends for restaurants or get-togethers, but it can also affect someone's um, overall health. Studies have shown that there is a possible link between hearing loss and dementia, or I should say untreated hearing loss and dementia, and individuals with hearing loss are more at risk for or falls as well as auditory deprivation. Obviously if there's a hearing loss the brain is not receiving certain sound signals mm -hmm. as what it's expecting to hear when you have normal hearing. Right. And isn't hearing loss often diagnosed as something else? Hearing, yes. Hearing loss can often be misdiagnosed as something else. It's possible that someone can be diagnosed at least in the initial stages of dementia or mm -hmm. memory problems or attention because they're simply not responding appropriately to something that they didn't hear. Um, so it's very important that um, everyone should have a hearing test just to have a baseline because you never know if you're go something's going to happen, if you're going to get sick, if you might have some type of head injury or physical trauma that can automatically change your hearing. So it's very important for everyone to have their hearing tested at least once for a baseline mm -hmm. and then monitored every couple of years just like you do with uh, eye exams exams and dental checkups. It's important to have hearing checkups as well. Right. Now, a lot of times as, as, as our loved ones get older, you know, they, we start to notice that they're not hearing so well. Mm -hmm. Now, they may be ignoring us. Correct. <laughs> but, you know, telltale signs like the TV getting really loud mm -hmm. and things of that nature um, can be a clue to, to the family that something's going on. Correct. Now, um, I know from personal experience that, you know, that our loved ones are often resistant mm -hmm. to seeking treatment. So, uh, what would you suggest to a family that suspects hearing loss and they're trying to get a loved one to go for an exam? How would we go about getting them to see you? Mm -hmm. um, the most important thing is for the family to try and be compassionate and encouraging. Uh, an individual with hearing loss will often feel embarrassed or possibly have a low self-esteem, at least
least when it comes to social interactions and communication, things of that nature. So it's important to uh, try to put a positive outlook as to the importance of having their hearing tested to either make sure that their hearing is within normal limits and then possibly consider other um, avenues as to why they may not be paying attention or following conversations um, as often as they used to. Mm -hmm. um, but also that it can be more noticeable if someone is misunderstanding or not in being involved in a group conversation. That can be more obvious and possibly more embarrassing than wearing um, hearing devices either in your ear or behind your ear mm -hmm. and then hopefully gain back your social activities, right. you know, talking to people and, and being more confident. Um, I've had many patients or their spouse say to me that almost immediately once someone has worn hearing aids for a few days and goes back into a social situation or meets friends for dinner, um, the person is more alert and more involved in the conversation mm -hmm. and not just, you know, sitting to the side and, and not being involved in what's being said. Right. And this, this can be true of a lot of things that we try to do for our loved ones. Uh, a lot of times they feel embarrassed that they need help, but um, something that, that I try to do or advise families to do whenever they're confronted with these kinds of situations is, as you say, turn it around. Um, turn it into a positive. You know, it'll show them that, you know, mm -hmm. look, you're trying to help them to be more independent longer. Correct. And the better they can comprehend what's going on around them in their world, then the better the quality of life and the longer that they can live successfully, happily, and mm -hmm. healthfully on their own. Now, um, I know that some people have a vanity problem mm -hmm. with, with, with assistive devices. What kinds of things are out there now that um, could perhaps alleviate the embarrassment mm -hmm. of, of wearing a, a hearing aid? The cosmetic appearance of hearing aids is definitely a very popular topic that manufacturers and professionals are always trying to improve. Um, there are small hearing aids that go completely into the ear canal and also small hearing aids that go behind the ear. Um, so the hearing aids of the past that maybe our grandparents or um, family members may have had 10 or 20 years ago um, for the most part are obsolete or at least no longer uh, a common choice or a commonly available. Um, in the past hearing aids used to be very large going mm -hmm. behind the ear mm -hmm. and now they can be miniature and I can show you some samples of those if you like. Oh wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also another issue is a lot of times people lose their hearing aids. Mm -hmm. now, you, you, you had showed me, shown me something that, that can be um, helpful. Yes, for, for both children as well as adults who will sometimes take their hearing aids out or if the hearing aids are falling out or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. um, especially if there's some attention or memory issues, uh, the hearing aids that I'm wearing right now actually have a cord huh? that is connected to the back of my sweater and what this cord, it's a bit difficult to take off, which is the purpose of the clip, um, but this cord allows the hearing aids to only fall so far uh. from the person and would always be attached to their clothing. Right. Um, so if a child or an adult were to take the hearing aid out or scratch their ear or something happens, mm -hmm. instead of the hearing aid falling on the floor and not being realized that it was lost or no longer in the person's ear, hopefully a teacher or a nurse, a parent or a family member can realize that the hearing aids are um, dangling mm -hmm. from the person's shirt right. and then help them put the hearing aids back on or find out why that the individual took the hearing aids off. Right. So this is a great uh, insurance policy, if you will, for a relatively uh, low amount of money um, to keep the hearing aids connected or at least attached to the person at all times. Right. This can also be helpful if someone is in a hospital situation mm -hmm. um, um, temporarily because it's very it can be common for hearing aids to be placed on a table and then lost or someone throws them away oh boy. so that yeah. they're always attached to the individual also in rehabilitation settings I know my mom lost so much stuff mm -hmm. when, she, when she was in rehab her clothes her glasses shoes all kinds of stuff so right. that would be a real boon to people who are in that kind of temporary setting so that you know there would be less risk of losing something now, you mentioned the um, the cost um, I think a, a concern 
that a lot of people have is you know the, the cost of assistive devices. Is there um, a way that they can get some help with uh, with with the cost of the, the devices? And uh, I really I have no idea what mm -hmm. what the what the range of cost is. The range of cost of hearing aids can be anywhere from a few hundred dollars all the way to a few thousand dollars for one. So there's definitely a a very wide range of cost. Um, most insurance companies do not provide a reimbursement for hearing aids, mm -hmm. but that is something that's currently um, in the works and being changed. So I am seeing more insurances mm -hmm. at least providing some type of discount or coverage. Um, but every insurance company and every plan is different, right. uh, so it's hard to make that general assumption. Mm -hmm. There are certain um, programs in the state of New Jersey mm -hmm. called the New Jersey Hearing Aid Project, and that is a nonprofit organization that has been established for about a year and a half or so um, through Montclair State University, the New Jersey Division of Deaf and Hard of Hearing, or DDHH, and Sertoma, which is a national charity. Um, and for individuals or New Jersey residents over the age of 65 who do not have um, a current working hearing aid, depending on their income, uh, their annual income limits, they may be entitled to receive a refurbished hearing aid. Oh. So that's something that um, individuals can contact the New, Je uh, New Jersey Division of Deaf and Hard of Hearing or do a search for a uh, New Jersey Hearing Aid Project mm -hmm. or by all means contact Grand Family Planning or my office as well um, to get more information on that. Wonderful. A national program that is available to individuals of any age is a program called Audient um, and they offer discounted hearing aids where you can typically typically buy um, new hearing aids for the individual um, anywhere from around, I'm going to estimate around 600 to maybe um, $1,000 each. Uh -huh. um, but again, that does depend on the individual's annual income. Uh -huh. uh, is, is, does Medicare cover? Medicare will typically cover the cost of the hearing test as long as it's a medical necessity to right. have the hearing test done. They won't cover your annual hearing tests, right. um, but typically Medicare does not cover the cost of hearing aids. Right. Um, sometimes your supplemental insurance may cover it as well, but again, it depends on the individual plan. Right. And then, of course, there are uh, Advantage plans, which correct are, include more services, and so you you gotta you gotta check. Right. It's it's very important to. Um, even before you go for the hearing test, if possible, contact your insurance uh, to see if you do have a hearing aid benefit. You know, right. knowledge is power in mm -hmm. regards to um, being prepared for the visit when you go for the hearing test, sure. if you think you are um, a candidate for hearing aids or if you do have hearing loss. Mm -hmm. For people who either um, have hearing aids or are not quite ready for hearing aids, there are other um, options or assisted listening devices that are available. Mm -hmm. So if someone is specifically only having difficulty hearing television or if you and your spouse um, prefer the TV at different volumes, mm -hmm. there's uh, different types of wireless TV amplification systems. Awesome. So one system that I can show you an yeah. example of. This is, the, the, this is really cool. I'm really <clears throat> going to use this with my dad. <laughs> This is a particular type of uh, wireless TV headset. So you'd have something connected to your television, and then that would transmit the sound to this wireless headset. Mm. Um, and the individual can raise the volume and to a certain extent raise the tonal quality mm. um, so that they can listen to the hearing or the television at a comfortable listening, listening level and not disturb the person who's sitting next to them or even mm. sleeping next to them if right. you're um, watching TV late at night. Um, it is important though um, if you are going to use different types of assisted listening devices um, you should also have your hearing tested so at least you have that baseline information you can monitor any changes in your hearing um, as they occur and you're not overlooking a hearing loss and simply um, addressing individual situations. Mm -hmm. um, with the technology today 
say that's in the hearing devices. Um, it can address most issues in regards to hearing on the telephone, hearing TV, hearing in quiet situations, as well as to a certain extent in background noise situations. Um, other assisted listening devices that are available are uh, amplified telephones or even captioned phones. Mm. So with captioned telephones, and that was good timing, <laughs> with uh, captioned telephones, the individual can actually read what the other person or caller is saying in addition to hearing them on the phone. So it does help to give a bit of uh, visual clues and additional clarity so that you can read what the person is saying either on a regular basis or if you're not sure if someone said 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock mm -hmm. um, to get that additional clarity. Now, the, those, uh, um, Anne Marie showed me um, the CapTel system. Uh, we, we were actually at an event recently and uh, my sister-in-law has, has some hearing issues and um, you know, we're talking about you know, being able to communicate, especially since mm -hmm. she's in Florida, we're in New Jersey, um, and she texts a lot. Um, but sometimes you want to talk on the phone and my husband gets upset because they, he's trying to have a conversation with her and from the responses she's giving him, clearly she's not quite grasping what he said. So um, the, the CapTel devices, they, they, they give you visual information, but how is that, how is that information gathered from the, from the conversation? How does that actually work? There is a third-party captionist um, who is able to hear the callers, so the, the other person that you're talking to, um, able to hear only their end of the conversation, uh -huh. and then it's real-time captioning by a live person. Um, so they're not hearing both sides of the conversation, mm -hmm. it's just the one-sided uh, story. Okay. And the CapTel phone or a caption phone um, is definitely very helpful for people who live alone mm -hmm. um, because they're able to keep a sense of independence um, as to whether it's making their own appointments or other phone important phone calls that they may need to make as well as talking to friends and family members long distance who they don't get to see on a regular basis. Right. So if
thoughts may avoid is group interactions and talking to people who you may not be familiar with. Um, but it's a great group that can help with community awareness and also provide different types of tips or devices that have helped them to hear better in certain situations and other types of compensatory strategies to have how to overcome a difficult hearing situation. Awesome. And, and okay. any other thoughts about um, things that people should know about hearing loss and um, how to, how to approach it? Um, one thing I would definitely recommend and something that I spend a lot of time with my patients and their family, family members with are better communication strategies. It's one thing for uh, someone either to have normal hearing or to have a hearing loss and wear hearing aids, but that doesn't mean even under normal situations with normal hearing, you're going to hear 100% of conversation 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. We hear with our brains in our regards to how we process process sounds and our perception of sounds, hearing doesn't um, just occur at the ears. That's just the entry level of the hearing mechanisms. Uh, so some of the better communication strategies that I discuss with my patients for the person who's talking or the speaker, um, you want to speak face to face whenever possible and of course get the person's attention first. <laughs> and I know it can be a bit of a, a challenge, especially when something pops into your head or you have your hands full and you're doing other things, but especially if someone has any kind of attention problems or memory problems or difficulty hearing, they may not realize you're talking to them until halfway through the sentence, and then unfortunately whatever you said may not make sense because they didn't hear the entirety of what you said. Right. So it's very important to get someone's attention first if they do have difficulty understanding at certain times, get their attention first and then speak face to face. Also, if someone is having difficulty hearing you, um, it may not be uh, a good thing to speak louder because then the person assumes that you're shouting at them um, or that you're angry or becoming very frustrated, which you know can be a common uh, response when someone asks you to repeat things uh, over and over again. Mm -hmm. So it's more important if someone has difficulty hearing you for you to speak slower and to put a slight pause in between your words so that makes the processing and comprehension of what you're saying a little bit easier than automatically raising your voice and have it seem as if there's an emotional um, disconnect. So not I would recommend speaking slower, not necessarily louder. Right. Um, also, you want to try to get rid of any background noise that's in the area. Okay. So if you're um, having dinner and having a conversation, don't have the dishwasher going on at the same time because that distraction uh, of the background noise, even for someone who does have normal hearing, can just be a distraction and make it more challenging to understand what you're saying. So it's important to um, reduce any background noise, turn the TV off. Um, you know, it might be more challenging to have a conversation outside or on a busy street than in a quiet environment. So those are just some things to think of. For the individual who's doing the listening, if you're having a hard time hearing what someone is saying, it's an important to be an assertive listen listener. So you can tell the person, I'm sorry, I, I'm having a difficult time understanding you. Can you face me while um, you're talking to me? Or can you speak a little slower? Or can you say that in a different way? Um, or not talk while you're chewing or something <laughs> of that nature, which is, you know, things that we all do do without realizing that we're doing it. Um, and also it's important that if you are in um, a noisy situation, it's typically helpful to have the background noise behind you mm. and not the background noise in front of you, especially since the person that you are trying to listen to should be in front of you. So you don't want the person talking and the background noise to be coming from the same direction. And I also recommend to use uh, conversational repair strategies. So if you, um, if there was something that you said that I didn't understand, I would say, what time are we going to the store? Instead of just saying what or repeat that or I didn't hear you, to actually specify either what you did or didn't hear can definitely help the, the person talking um, help you to understand what they're saying. So those are just some good tips for both the person speaking 
as well as for the listener. I have a, I have a tip also. Okay. My husband is much taller than I am. <laughs> And, uh, and he also has a partial hearing loss in one of his ears. So um, one of the things that I've learned is that when someone is, when there's a great disparity in your heights, you got to try and get like closer to the same level. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, especially in, in a social setting, people will be talking up at him. He's, he's six seven, folks. Um, so you know, so they'll be talking up at him, and he doesn't quite get what they're saying. So it makes him feel so socially awkward because he has to keep asking pe people to re repeat themselves. So, so in those situations, sometimes it's a good idea to try and get people to sit mm -hmm. and, and face each other um, and to try and like be in a, in a place where the lighting is favorable so you, you, know, you can actually see each other. Because there are a lot of cues, right, that we get not just from the sound of the voice, of course. But, but also from the, from our, you know, our our physical interaction, and you know, a lot, there were a lot of other um, body cues. Yes, that yeah. we give each other. Visual clues um, are very important, as well as you said, body language. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anne-Marie, thank you so much for your time today. You're very uh, welcome. I, I'm, I'm sure there will be a lot of people who will benefit from what what we talked about today, and uh, I'm excited to, to, to put it out there. Uh, I really want to thank you, and uh, I'm thrilled that you're a member of Grand Family Planning. Anne-Marie has been thank helping you. to build Grand Family Planning to make it the awesome tool that it must be to help families to be proactive and to help, to help families to address the kinds of situations that we discussed here today to be able to help our loved ones to face their issues, to distinguish between hearing issues and other possible issues, and to find remedies mm -hmm. so that they can be uh, independent as long as they possibly can, and to be able to enjoy being in a setting with their loved ones um, and to get the most out of a high quality of life. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, and I would recommend anyone who has any additional questions, um, please feel free to contact me or Tracy. And you can easily get our contact information by visiting grandfamilyplanning.com or sophisticatedhearing.com. Wonderful. Anne Marie, thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.